today. But, but even think about this experience you had in the white school where you become the leader of this group of white kids, the Black Knights. That seems to me like a prediction that you're going to be a politician. That somebody well, who can take people different from himself and put them into a cohesive group and lead them, that's a natural politician. Well, all we had in Harlem were gangs, so when I came here talking about gangs, mm -hmm. this is the most exciting thing to happen to them. And so I became a natural leader because I was the only one that knew about <laughs> gangs. Uh -huh. And so everything that I knew in Harlem, I was able to bring to this Jewish community. And I'm not saying their parents were excited about it, mm -hmm. but I was. Uh, you know, I think, that once you acquire the ability to get things done that you want to get done and persuade other people that you can and you do it, that's the kind of leader I like to be. Well, that seems to me that's the kind of leader you are, someone who co convinces other people to do things you want done that they may not even want to do, but somehow or another you're able to convince them that these are the things they ought to do. Now, yeah. where does that come from? How did you develop this ability? Whatever works. Whatever works, works. I mean, does it go back to the high school or even beyond that, before that? Oh, my mother said that when I went to kindergarten, she knew I was going to be somebody because I insisted on having a desk when they didn't have a desk. Mm. But no, I, I consider leaders Mm. like Nelson Mandela, mm. a person that can be jailed for 27 years and be tolerant enough to want to forgive the wardens. Those are leaders. I think Martin Luther King, who loved his wife and his children, but was so compassionate about the cause that he would jeopardize his life and all of those lives. Fannie Lou Hamer, when I would be with her with Percy Sutton and Paul O'Dwyer, these crazy white folks were bombing houses. They had a complete disregard for human life. And I will always reserve in my mind uh, those people that, yes, can get people excited enough to do the right and the moral thing at the risk of their lives and have the ability to eloquently do it. And so there's no question that I can get things done politically. I'm excited about it and, I, and success breeds success. I was talking to a group of people in the State Department just today and I asked were there any poker players in the group. Winning at poker, when you're winning, it excites you. Mm -hmm. And when you're losing, you can almost predict you got to have a bad night. There's very little turnarounds. And when you've been a, on a roll to succeed, there's so many people that want to do what you want done because they want to be a part of that success. Mm -hmm. And the epitome of it is to, after you spent 37 years in the House of Representatives where 435 people are dependent on each other, to get legislation, but came there from 435 roads so that you really are not dependent on them politically. It's a political independence that is just absolutely remarkable. And then when you become chairman, you have so many new friends. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have jurisdiction over taxes, over uh, trade, over social security, uh, uh, over Medicare. But when I go to the White House and meet with the Secretary of State, it's for national security and education to me and getting away from poverty and making this country competitive and making certain that internationally we don't have to depend on other countries to educate us are the things that Brown versus the Board of Education about. Mm -hmm. Except as Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, this is what America has to be all about. We should not have to ask people to send us their educated in order to maintain our competitive edge and a part of our trade policy now is education. Mm -hmm. And poverty just is in a lot of pain. It's costly. Poor folks are a threat to our national security. 
They don't get health care. They don't get education. They're not productive. They're inclined to get into trouble. They, they get sick. They're in the hospital. They're in jails. They're in drugs. So, hey, we got to eliminate that if we're going to maintain our international leadership.